Hi, I'm Brett. Today I want to talk about the ongoing concerns of what people have with the soot build-up on turbo diesel engines. And behind me we've got a common example which is the uh, Triton turbo diesel. Now this uh, package comes in a 3.2, 2.5 and the new 2.4, but they all share a fairly common uh, problem which is a bit of a dirty secret. Check out our other videos and we'll talk about it now, is the build-up of soot in the inlet manifold which is created by the exhaust gas recirculation coming out of the exhaust in through the exhaust gas recirculation valve in an inlet manifold where it mixes with crankcase blow-by oil out of the sump and then it forms this horrible sooty scummy looks like Vegemite on the inlet manifold and then it starts choking the engine and it restricts power and it causes other supplementary problems. Now there are several ways you can stop it. There are some things that are a little bit dodgy, some things are reliable and some things frankly are a really good way to do it. So let's start about some of the ideas and the problems. Now this particular car has got everything on it. This guy um, had his engine rebuilt recently and when he put it back together himself he over delivered on the things that he wanted to do. So let's just talk about what things work first. So when the engine runs the inlet manifold over here from the intercooler goes through the inlet throttle body, down and through the engine, across through the heads, out through the exhaust, through the turbo where it generates energy to run the compressor. Now on the turbo side here, which you can see this is the exhaust manifold and the, com and the exhaust turbine, you'll see right down inside here before the exhaust comes out to the turbo, right in there is a port which is part of the exhaust gas recirculation. So out of that hole there, is the exhaust that comes through this pipe instead of going out through the turbo creating energy. Now what you can do down in there and some people do is they put a, uh, a blanking plate like this. This one's a bit crudely mounted. Effectively goes over there, you bolt it all back together and, and then it um, blocks off the exhaust port there. But what also happens is because this is this is the hot side of the engine. It also goes through from that pipe there up to here is a cooler which reduces the exhaust temperature because this is hot before it then goes up through this one here and across to the other side of the engine and into this is the exhaust gas recirculation valve which you can see is electronically controlled by the engine control unit. Now in this situation the client again fitted a blanking plate on this side here and blocked it off even more because this part is the outlet of the cooler where it goes across the top of the head and into the back of the um, exhaust gas recirculation valve and underneath here is the inlet manifold and that's where all the dirty stuff enters the inlet manifold. Now this part which is electronically controlled you can if you wanted to. Ironically in this situation where the client has tried almost everything about what he wanted to do is you can electronically control it. Now there's two ways to electronically control it. One is through the engine control unit where we custom tune the factory ECU because we can control the uh, engine control unit operation of the way the valve opens and closes or you can do incredibly what this client's almost done as well and some people buy this as a kit off the internet and it is a plug that goes between the normal wiring harness and the um, airflow meter sensor which sits on the air intake of the engine. Now of course all the air comes in, most cars come with a snorkel through the intake up through the air filter here and then in through the airflow meter. Now in, on the bottom of this um, airflow meter sensor is a device to measure both the inlet temperature and the inlet air mass which then sends a signal through this wire through the engine ECU control unit which tells the ECU how to operate the engine and one of the things that relies on this sensor is the amount of air going into the engine. It uses that as a critical component to control the fuel mixtures, um, the flow and then it matches it with boost control and everything else. Very very critical sensor on the way the engine runs. But what it also does, it tells you the inlet air temperature. Now inlet air temperature is part of the engine control units Mix mechanism where it electronically decides if it opens and closes and turns on the EGR. So what this device does here in a very basic way changes the signal from the air flow meter sensor temperature device 
before it goes into the harness to the engine ECU. Now the ECU then thinks because of this device, the temperature is different and therefore the ECU changes the way the operation of everything that relies on inlet air temperature. And one of those things is EGR, but unfortunately that signal also has an effect on other control components that the engine ECU relies on. So by fitting one of these devices, and I'll just pull it out, and it's pretty straightforward, and all it is is just effectively a replacement plug. I can't get it off at the moment. And that's all it is because this is supposed to be on there like that. In here is a little bit of electronic conversion data technology. It's pretty simple, probably a, a, um, a simple bit of electronics or even just a um, capacitor or, or a diode or something. And what it does, it changes the signal from here before it gets the engine, ECU. And of course, effectively what happens, it tricks the ECU into not turning on EGR. The downside is these types of devices also have other negative effects on engine operation. But what I wanted to touch on is, yes, it is a cheap and cheerful solution. So is blanking plates. So is all sorts of different other devices. But from our point of view, the preferred solution that we would like to recommend is a proper custom tune of the factory ECU for two reasons. One is we control the ECU for EGR only and that temperature signal coming out of here still then correctly operates the other parameters that the engine is relying on. It also gives us the ability to control other parameters which gives a huge increase in power, torque and performance. So here you have all of the different things in one engine um, that this client has asked us to investigate. And by the way, he did ask me to do a story on this because he, he just followed this information on that, really didn't know what he's doing. He's got all these weird fault codes happening with his car. We're gonna put it all back to standard. We're gonna do a proper custom ECU tune, put it all back together with his fresh engine rebuild that he had by another workshop, um, get the car going the way it should. So there you have it. If you're looking for solutions, there is the proper ECU custom tuning option. There's a slightly lesser cost plug-in solution. There's the other alternative, which is the blanking solution. All of these things work, but they have their different strengths and weaknesses. But the number one thing is you understand how they work. For more technical information, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. I really hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about the way the soot system operates on the car. And it is part of the emissions control system, so you do need to choose how you carefully do it if you're gonna do it on a road-going car. But for now, check out our website or make a comment on the bottom of this video. Share it around. We'd love to hear from you. But for today, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.